so I had to wait. Yeah. Now, uh, a couple months later, we had uh, VJ Day, the victory over Japan. Do you remember hearing about that? Well, we, we were sweating that out because we didn't know. We thought maybe we might be going to Japan, you know. But after after through that bomb, well, we thought, well, we're not going to have to go now. So we was kind of glad of it. Other than that, we was glad the war was over. Now, um, when did you actually leave service? When did I leave the service? Yeah. I left in March. What was it? March the seventh, forty-six. Okay. And we 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 flew from. Well, okay, we left. We left Bilouka Bay. And I went to Antwerp, Belgium, and I stayed up there for about a week or ten days, I guess it was, waiting for the ship to come home. And we finally boarded the Wilson Victory, and we had had rations on board for 1,200 men, I think it was, and we had only 600 of us boarded the ship. And we had all that food for 600 people to eat. And we couldn't possibly eat it, so we had to throw it out before we got back to the base, back to the coast here. And they got a big crew of people to throw it out, too. They had to throw it on board. It took us, what was it, 14 days to come home, I think, on Wilson. We landed at Camp Kilmer, and we landed, left Camp Kilmer. We flew from Camp Kilmer to Fort Bliss, El Paso. I was there about two or three days and was discharged. And, and the fellow drove us home in his car and drove us back to China. And that was the end of my military career. What, what do you remember about coming into to the U.S., coming into Camp Kilmer? You're, you're leaving you know, you're leaving Europe and you're coming back to your country. How did you feel about that? I was just glad to be home. There wasn't nobody greeted us. There wasn't a soul there, except the, I take it back, the Salvation Army was there on, on the dock. Red Cross was on the other side, but Salvation Army gave us a little pocketbook and some donuts and free coffee and whatnot. There wasn't nobody greeted, there wasn't no horns blowing or nothing, you know. By that time, it was old hat, see, because everybody had come home. Because right. I was, I came home on points only, and a lot of guys came home that, that got points. Well, they got, they got five points for uh, battle stars and for any battles, and they got five, so much for wounds and so much for this and so much for that. but. In my case, and a lot of our guys' cases, we, we just had service points, and that was it. So. Yeah, because you were in kind of those support positions. That's right, yeah. So it's a little different we than didn't, battle. We didn't, <laughs> us boys at Fourth Sad didn't pull any triggers. We didn't fight any battles, but we put a lot of planes in the air, you know, back in the air that had been knocked out. You know. So we kind of figured we did our part. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about what your role was? I, I'm proud of it. I, I'm proud of my service point, you know, service time. Mm -hmm. yeah. That I could serve my country. Mm -hmm. But it didn't. It didn't. Military didn't have any. Didn't have any too much effect on me. I, you did what was you supposed to do, and that was it, you know. But I will say this much: I think that. All boys that reach the age of 18 should spend two years with the military of his choice, whichever branch. But I say, you know, ought to serve his country for two years. And it never, the military never hurt anybody. Don't let anybody fool you. It never. If he was ruined when he came out, he wasn't any good when he went in, you know. <laughs> That's all I got to say, you know. What, uh, what medals or citations did you receive? Well, I got the Good Conduct Medal. Okay. Good. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's about it. Uh, I didn't, 
we didn't win any battles, you know. We didn't fight any battles, so we didn't have any any ribbons other than, oh, I've got, I don't know, five or six ribbons, but I don't remember now what they are. But mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they're listed on your discharge paper. Yeah. Um, so you served overseas for about 20 months, you said? Beg your pardon? You served overseas for about 20 months? I was overseas exactly two years. Two years, okay. I left in March, and I left in February, and I came home in February. So what did you do when you returned back to Arizona? Um, I, well, I went to work with my dad, farm for two years. In Queen Creek? Yeah, hit well, Channel Heights. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> after two years, I said, this is not for me. So I took a job out at the International Proving Grounds. Where was that? At West Chandler. Okay. I stayed out there 32 years. The International Proving Grounds? Mm-hmm. Crossroads of that? Beg your pardon? Do you know the crossroads of that? What the general area is? Uh, well, it's, I tell you, it's right across, right across the hill from, from uh, Central, right Central in Phoenix, right across the South Mountain, on the other side of the South Mountain. Right there, Pecos Road, Phoenix yeah. Bell. West Pecos, out there. You know. What did you do there? I, was, I worked in test development with the International. In other words, I was a glorified mechanic, you know. And you're working on farm, farm equipment? No, no, heavy equipment. Heavy equipment. Yeah, earth moving equipment. Oh, okay. So you're testing like the new, uh, new models that were coming we, out? We tested every, we tested Production models and test models, you know. And even we, we tested competitors' tractors. Comparative, you know, with us. <clears throat> Where were you living at? Where did you live at? Where did I live at? Mm -hmm. Well, when I started, I lived at Channel Heights. And then I moved to Mesa. And I left Mesa. I lived out on Elton Avenue in Mesa. And then we moved, had a home built in Chandler out on uh, Elliot and Dobson. And had a home built out there and lived there until I retired in 1980. Whereabouts on Elliot and Dobson? Right there on Cobstock, on West Comstock. Okay. All right. I live near. There, there's, there's 80 acres right there that's, that's mm -hmm. in the county. And I lived in that subdivision. Because oh, okay. I live right near there. I live at Warner and Dobson. You what? I live at Warner and Dobson. Warner and Dobson, okay. <laughs> I lived on Elliot and Dobson. Yeah, okay. That's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, so tell me about how you met Emma. Oh. <laughs> and your story's better meshed with me. Well, no, 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 really. I'm, I came home from work one night, and <clears throat> Dad said, take a, you know, take a look at that little gal up there at the store. And, uh, I said, why? I said, this moved, they just moved in up there. I said, uh, her dad's running that store now, owns that store. And I said, I'm not, I don't know if I mentioned it. I said, little bitty thing. He said, you go up and take a look at that. Just like a piece of merchandise, you know. So I, I said around there, and after all, I said, I still think you ought to take a look at it. So I said, okay. So I <laughs> went up there and took a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, where, that's how we met. Yeah. And uh, it was her first date was the 4th of July, and we got married the 14th of August. Wow. The same year? And we've been married 61 years. Wow. Where did you get married at? Quartzsite. Oh, Quartzsite, okay. Quartzsite, Arizona. Were you eloping? 
No. How uh, do you go to court by it? Well, it's the old, first place we could find it. We had a JP. <laughs> Everything was closed up, you know, <laughs> the time we got there. So yeah. we got it all the way out to court side. So uh, what year was it that you got married? Do what? What year? 48. Okay. August 14th, 1948. Okay. And, um, and you had children? One. One? My wife had a child by a previous marriage. Okay. And, what, and I, what's your son's name? Pat. And I adopted him when he was, oh, seven, seven, huh? Seven, yeah, yeah, that's right. So he's, um, Pat he's, Baker? Yeah, he changed his name. So you had a little boy. All right. Um, these are just, these are kind of just some last questions that we like to ask. Um, do you feel like your service in World War II affected the rest of your life? I don't think so. Mm. I, I think it, it, it might have bettered me. You know, I, I, I think the military was good for me. <coughs> but uh, I was always serious-minded, always been too serious-minded. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the military changed me in that aspect, but... Military, you think about it is when the Second World War broke out, so many people were just born and raised in one area, you know, and that's they born and raised and died in that one area. Well, when the, when the war broke out, so many of us uprooted, you know, and like well, like myself now, I, I saw a lot of the country, a lot of I saw a lot of the world, you know, and my wife was born and raised in East Texas, and she never had been out of there be before the war. And it, it, it changed people, you know. I think it's for the better, really. Mm -hmm. okay. um, what lessons did you learn from this time in your life? Do what? What lessons did you learn from this time in your life? Uh, like if you were going to pass on something to your son or if you have grandchildren, you know, if you were going to pass something on to them about this time, what would you tell them? Well, I don't, I don't know what I would. I, I don't know. If somebody asked me a question, I'd probably answer the best I could, you know. I don't, yeah. I don't, I'm not too, too fond of give the advice you know what do you think what do you think uh kids kids today what do you think they should know about world war ii about that time period? well i think they should be taught something about it instead of uh, it, it, they ignore it you know i mean your school systems today uh, ignore all your, your 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 wars and i don't i think that's wrong but i think uh, the kids <coughs> grow up today don't know anything about they don't they don't know too much about the world. They don't know where, some of them don't know where New York City is. They don't know where Paris, France is. Uh, they should be taught, you know, uh, instead of just going in one door and out the next. I think they should at least teach them about the war and, and the, the trials and tribulations that we went through, you know. And a lot of men lost their lives to fight that thing. Mm -hmm. But I do think that the Second World War, veterans come home and built a good nation, you know. And we took it, and we didn't sit around and cry about it either, you know. We said that we said that went to work, you know. Um, do you have any other thoughts that you would like to share before we end? No, you know, I think I've probably talked probably talk too much already. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've done a good job. Okay, well, I think that's it. I think we're done. I sure appreciate your time well, having us come down here. And, and we appreciate, of course, your service to the country as being, you know, part of World War II and, and being in the Army. So. Well, I, uh, 
I wouldn't take a million dollars for my experience. I'm glad I went, you know. Glad I could serve it. You're welcome. Glad you folks came down here. Yeah, so am I. Hey. You didn't set it up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny that you say <clears throat> a lot of people that I've talked to, because I've talked to men and women, and that's one question that I've asked. I've been doing oral histories for a long time. And I always ask, what was your experience during World War II? Was there old enough or during the Depression? And, um, a lot of people were at the movies at the time when they heard about uh, about Pearl Harbor because it was a Sunday, and so a lot of people would go to the movies on a Sunday. And um, it's it's interesting to hear that. And the other thing is, we I did an interview with Noel Addy. Do you know the Addy family from Chandler? I know I know Abby, but not from Chandler. Addy, and um, he he was actually he was stationed in Texas. And um, he was with the Army Air Force. And um, he had just proposed to his girlfriend that morning. And they had stopped along the road or whatever. They were coming back from a friend's house and they stopped along the road. And he proposed to her. And then they, they were going to go into a church at the base and, or a church that was near the base. And they got there that evening. And they said the whole church was in an uproar and everything. And, and they heard that you know Pearl Harbor had been attacked very emotional because they knew he was training to be a glider pilot and so they knew that he was going to have to go and they are just got engaged so it was like they had that really happy time and then like right after that they realized you know they were going to be separated so you know the worst thing I think in the whole the whole thing when it started uh, even besides the sneaky attack they did if those three de delegates from uh, Japan walked out of our big building up there in Washington, smiling. They were sitting right there telling them there is no war, we're not going to do this, not going to do that. And then you should have seen the picture of them walking down the steps, all three of them smiling. Mm -hmm. That almost puts hate in us. You know, our, our, I was a senior in high school, and our uh, superintendent had been in the First World War. And he was trying to teach us to hate. We didn't know how to hate, <laughs> you know. And like he said, you born and raised and we are right there, everybody's your kin folks almost, and uh, you just didn't have any hatred. And he said, well, if someone came in and shot your daddy, wouldn't you shoot him back? Ooh, I don't know if I could shoot for somebody or not. <laughs> it's just like that, you know. But you learn over a period of time, and this one friend got killed, and that friend got killed, and then, you know. I have I had one good friend killed in a war. He lived up in the Aleutians. Mm -hmm. Went to school with him. Yeah. Best friend I ever had was a, was a Mexican kid. Mm -hmm. What was his name? Do you remember? Jesus Perez. And he lived in Mesa. I guess so, yeah, because he was up on the, on the islands up there. How did you find out? Did you find out while you were in service that your friend was killed, or was that before you actually went? Do what? Did you find out while you were serving your time, or did you find out he, had, he was killed before you went? I know. I found out. I found out. I came home on furlough. Found out he'd been killed, <laughs> and I, I, I got furloughed. The first furlough I got was a year after I went in. I went in in November, and the next, the next November, I got a furlough. I came home, and that's when I found out he was killed. Mm -hmm. Then after, just after that, I came home on November, and then the next February is when I went overseas. See. Yeah. How did that make you feel? Did you want to go back? In the service after you found out your friend was killed? Or did that make you... It didn't, it didn't, it didn't, no, I, I hated it, but it happened, you know. You don't have to make a connection. No, you can't, you can't let it, let it get the best of you, you know. Now, what was it that brought your family to, to Chandler Heights? Mormons. Yeah, why did 
his family. My dad had everything say, and they didn't know much about it. And my sister, uh, she married all of them. And uh, she took daddy to Memphis, Tennessee, the big clinic there. They didn't know too much about it. In Shuffle, Texas, they didn't know too much about it. And finally they said, if you'll go, uh, get away from oil field. We were living all so far. He said, um, it, it will belong in 